took a seat on the bed next to her and just sat there with a knife in my pocket debating whether to kill her right then and there. A quick-thinking teenager hides from intruders. A heartbreaking 911 call from a mother leads to multiple twisted trials, and a dispute over barking dogs turns deadly. First, 17-year-old Jake Evans made a chilling confession to the 911 dispatcher, but had the crime come out of nowhere? Ponsor County 911, where is your emergency? Uh, my house. What's the address? Okay, what's the emergency? Uh, I just killed my mom and my sister. What? I just killed my mom and my sister. You just killed your mother and your sister? How did you do that? Uh, I shot him with a uh, 22 revolver. And what is your name? Jake Evans. Jay Evans? Jake Evans. Are you sure they're dead? Yes. Okay. I want you to stay on the phone with me, okay? Are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Okay. Hold on just a minute. Where is the gun? Uh, it's on the kitchen counter. Okay. It's a 22. Yes. Okay, hold on. Jake? Yes? Are you on any kind of medication? No. Well, I, uh, I've i been going to the allergist a lot lately. Yeah. My mom. But no, nothing other than that. Okay, how old are you? 17. You don't take any other kind of medication? I mean, other than like Zyrtec and like Advil and, you know, like, do the pet and stuff like that, you know, for the allergies and headaches, but yeah. no. Okay, do you, um, is there any reason that you were so angry at your mother and your sister? Uh, I don't know, I, uh, I wasn't, it's weird, I wasn't even really angry with them, it just kind of happened, I've been kind of, uh, planning on, uh, killing for a while now. The, the two of them, or just anybody? Pretty much anybody. Why? I don't know. I, uh, I, I don't really like uh, people's uh, kind of attitude. Right. I think they kind of they're very uh, like you know emotional. I don't know verbally rude to each other and stuff like that. Right. And uh, I don't know. It, it's okay. It's just my family. I don't know. They're just kind of really. I guess this is really selfish to say, but to me, they I felt like they were just suffocating me in a way. I don't know. Uh, I, I i think, I'm, obviously, you know, I'm pretty, I guess, evil, but uh, that's, you know, whatever. Okay. Sorry. Are, no, don't be sorry. It's all right. I'm listening. Okay, you have my undivided attention. Uh, were your mom and sister in their beds? No. Uh, this, this is really going to mess me up for the, you know, in the future, uh, to see my sister. I told my sister that my mom needed her. Mm -hmm. She was in her room and she came out of her room and, uh, I, I shot her. She rolled down the stairs and I shot her again. And then I went down and I shot my mom about maybe three or four times. But I'll never forget this. Uh, okay, that's fine. My my uh, sister, she came down the stairs and she was screaming and I was telling her that I'm sorry, but to just hold still. Mm -hmm. That, you know, I was just going to make it go away, you know, but she just kept on freaking out. But finally she fell down and I shot her in the head about probably three times. So they're both downstairs? Uh, yes. Okay, where are you? In the kitchen. Okay. You're not sitting by the gun, are you? No, it's about like uh, 10 or 15 feet away from me. That's all right. Where's your dad? He's out of town. Do you know where he is? Out of town? Washington, D.C. Okay. And uh, for, I guess, future reference, I don't really want to see any of my family members, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, like it and visiting or whatever. I, I don't know how it works or anything, but I I just don't want any type of visitors. I don't want to see 
Okay. Where do you go to school, Jake? Uh, well, I used to go to Leo High School, mm-hmm. but now, now I'm, I'm kind of being homeschooled. Yeah, yeah. So there's just um, you and your sister and your mom and dad in the house? Live well, there? no, my dad's out of town. Well, yeah, but normally it's just your mom and your oh, sister and your dad and you. Yeah, and my grandpa and grandma, they live across the street. And my si- oh, my oldest sister, she lives with my grandparents. And uh, I have another sister, uh, and she's out in college. She's going to come out to visit us tomorrow. You don't want to hurt yourself, do you? No, uh, I'm a little freak, freaked out about guns now. Oh, sure. But you don't want to um, hurt yourself. I don't know. I, I definitely, you know, I assure you, I definitely don't like myself, you know. I... But I'm just so freaked out by guns now. And just to let you know, like, I I, 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 I hate the feeling of killing someone. I, you know, uh, it, <clears throat> I'm going to be messed up. <laughs> there, There are people that will help you. Well, you just take a deep breath. We have deputies coming, and they're going to help you. We're here to help you, too, okay? Um, We're going to help you. We're not going to hurt you, all right? I understand if y'all want to. No, we're not going to hurt you. We're there to help you, Jake. All right. All right, that's... Everybody thinks that, you know, we want to do bad things, but we don't. We want to help people. Right or wrong, we want to help people, and we're going to help you, okay? Do you understand that? Yeah. We're also here to help, okay? Jake, where is the kitchen in the house? Is it the back of the house? Yeah, kind of to the back, I guess. Okay. Okay. Um, We're talking with our sergeant now. He's almost at your house, but we'll probably, what I'll probably ask you to do, Jake, is when he gets there, is turn your porch light on. Right. Okay. Okay. And what he'll probably do is ask you to come out. Okay. 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 So you'll be all right. You're gonna be all right. Okay. All right. Okay. I'm gonna stay on the phone with you though and talk with you. That's okay. And you can talk to me. I'll listen. Is there anything you want to talk about? No, not really. Okay. What's your grandfather's or grandparents' last name? Stevens. Stevens with a V or a PH. What's that? Stavens. S T A V E N S. Okay. Okay. What's your grandpa's first name? Jim. Jim. And grandma? Uh, Diane. Diane. Do you, is it a gated community? Is there a gate? Uh, yes. Do you want the password? Yes, please. Wrong radio. Do you have a driver's license? No. No, no driver's license? What's your date of birth, honey? Uh, 1995. Month? Uh, May. May and the date? May 22nd. May 22nd, 1995? Mm-hmm. Okay. It's going to be all right. It really is. Okay? All right. But I'm going to stay on the phone with you. They'll be there shortly. won't be long now. That's your call. Yeah, just follow your protocol. Ours. Jake, would you mind going to the front door and turning the porch light on or any lights that you have outside? Yeah, I, I, I turned them on. Okay. Okay. Paul 414, or correction, Paul 404, my caller has turned the front lights on for you. Are you okay, Jake? Yeah. How old is she? 15. She, she was, I don't know, she had a really sweet side, but... Yeah. 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 Oh. How long ago did this happen, or how long ago did you, you shoot your sister and mom? Just a little while ago? Yeah. Like when you called? 30, 30 minutes ago. About 30 minutes ago? You'll be all right, Jake, okay? You'll be all right. Really worried about like you know like nightmares and stuff like that. Um, is, are there any type of medication for that and stuff? Well, I I think there is. I don't know. I'm not a doctor, but you know, um, the the justice system, and I'm sure your family I mean, you know, will get you the support you need. I don't mean to sound like a wimp or anything, but you know, <laughs> wow. I've never, like, done any violent in my whole life. You don't sound like a violent person. No, you don't. But there, um, help will be provided for you, medical and psychological. That will be provided to you, okay? So you don't have to worry about that right now. Take deep breaths for me, okay? You're doing fine. In through your nose and out through your mouth. 
so you don't hyperventilate, okay? And that'll slow down your heart rate, too. I'm sure it's just jumping all over in your chest. There you go. A couple more. Good. That sounds good. You sound a lot calmer right now. Just keep deep, taking deep breaths, and it'll keep the anxiety down. Are there any cars in your driveway, Jake? No. No cars in the driveway? Deep breaths, honey. In through your nose, real deep. I just, I just thought it'd be quick, you know. <laughs> I, I, I didn't want them to feel any pain. That's why I used a gun. <laughs> okay. But it was, it, it was like everything went wrong. <laughs> it, it's all right. Keep breathing for me. Okay, just in through your nose, real slow out through your mouth. A couple more deep breaths. Real deep in, real slow and real deep. Jake, my officers are almost there. Would you be willing to walk out on your own? Uh, yes. Yes? Uh, I, yes. Uh, uh, I guess I should tell, uh, I forgot, uh, before I called. Yes. The gun on the counter, uh, for some reason, when I put it down, it was loaded, just uh-huh. to let y'all know. Okay, that's fine, as long as it's on the counter. Yeah, it's on the counter, sir. All right, I, I believe you. Okay, they'll be there shortly, but I'll stay on the phone with you until, you know, it's time for you to walk out, okay? Are you on a on your home phone? Uh, yes. Is it cordless? Uh, yes. Okay, keep breathing. Keep breathing. You're doing good. What color is your house, Jake? Red brick? Yeah. Okay. Red brick? Okay. Okay. Okay, Jake, what I want you to do is, after we get through talking, I want you to put the phone down and leave it in the kitchen. You don't have to hang it up, okay? But I want you to walk outside, but when you're walking through the house and outside, stay visible. You know, don't hide behind any furniture. Open the front door. Do you have a, a glass screen door or a glass door or just the front door? No, just the front door. Okay. When you open the front door, step back, put your hands behind your head, and slowly walk outside. Okay? Or keep your, I'm not behind your hand, but keep your hands up in the air. Just walk very slowly and walk outside, but keep your hands visible. All right, sweetie? Okay, go ahead and put the phone down and do it. And then just listen to what Sergeant Fletcher has to say. He's very appreciative that you're willing to come out on your own. He thinks that's great, all right? And I'll talk to you later. Okay. All right, honey. You. You're welcome. The line's open. Jake Evans had killed his own mother, 48-year-old Jamie Evans, and his 15-year-old sister, Mallory Evans, in their upscale North Texas home. But what led this seemingly average teenager to commit such a heinous crime? According to Jake's confession, he was heavily influenced by a film, Rob Zombie's Halloween. The teen had watched it thrice the week leading up to the murders. He was amazed at how at ease the boy was during the murders and how little remorse he had afterward. Jake wondered if it would be the same for him. On October 3rd, 2012, after watching the film again, Jake played golf and contemplated killing his entire family. His original plan was to use a folding knife that belonged to his father. However, Jake decided he did not want them to feel anything and switched to using a 22 revolver he had stolen from his grandfather. At about 11.15 p.m., Jake knocked on his sister's door, telling her their mom needed her. When she came out, he shot her in the back and then in the head. He then ran down to the study and shot his mother three times. After realizing his sister was not yet dead, he shot her again. He then fired another shot into his mother's head. During the 911 call, law enforcement arrived at the property and arrested Jake, taking him into custody and charging him with capital murder. However, the court had concerns about his mental health. Two psychologists determined that Jake was incompetent to stand trial and he was ordered into the care of a state mental health hospital. But this changed on April 20th, 2015, when officials at the facility notified the court that the teen was competent and able to stand trial. That year, the case gained significant media attention and was featured in the documentary series Copycat Killers. Jake Evans pleaded guilty to two counts of murder and was sentenced to 45 years in prison, at least 22 and a half years before becoming eligible for parole. 
If he serves his full term, he is set to be released in 2057. A quick-thinking teen called 911 from under her bed while two men walked around the house. 911, where is your emergency? I think there's somebody in my, in my house. I don't know who. Okay. What city or township are you in? Harrison Township. What is your address? Okay. Hold on one moment. Yeah. Okay. Where are you at in the house? I'm in my room upstairs. Are you walking downstairs? I saw someone looking to my door downstairs. 13-year-old upstairs. Okay. Did you say upstairs in your bedroom? Yeah. Are you expecting anyone? No. Okay, tell me again what you hear. I don't know. I heard walking downstairs. And when I walked downstairs, I was looking through the door. And can you describe what this person was? He had like a black hat on, a brown jacket, I think. So you think it was a male? Yeah. <laughs> and you saw a male with a dark hood and a jacket? Hello, don't hang up. Hello, where are you at? Rachel, she saw a male inside. Now she's not answering me. Are you there? Okay. Do you have a closet in your room? Okay, they're on their way already. My partner's got them on the way already. I want you to go some... Do you have a lock on your bedroom door? Yeah. They already what? They are... Where are you, under the bed? Okay. Just lay quiet. I can listen, okay? I'm going to listen. Lay the phone down and I'll listen. Okay. What is your first What is your first name? Chloe. Chloe? Yeah. There's two people in the house. They How do you spell your name, hon? Okay. Okay, so you said they've already been up and through your bedroom? Yeah. Okay. You're still under the bed? I'm almost. You what? I'm like halfway up there. Okay. How did they not see you? Was the house locked that you were aware of? Yeah, they went through the garage door, I think. They came through the garage door? Okay. Do you have a dog? Yeah. Did the dog bark? No. Where is the dog at? I think downstairs. What kind of dog? Uh, a lab. She has a lab. The dog didn't bark. Okay, Chloe, I think they've spotted the guys, but I don't want you to come out of your bedroom, okay? I want you to stay there until I tell you it's safe, all right? The deputies are out there. He's tall. If you were to guess how old he was, would you be able to tell me? Please. Pardon me? Like, uh, like 20 or 30. 20 to 30 is white male? Yeah. Think really hard. Did you see any gloves on their hands? Yes, I think so. I think black gloves. Black gloves? You still under your bed? Yeah. All right. Someone was knocking on the door okay. before this happened, and I looked outside, and they had, like, a black van. A black van? Yeah, it was, like, a dark-colored, not, like, it was, like, a dark-colored van. Okay, is it possible for you to look out the window and tell me if that van is still there? Oh, no, I already looked out when we were walking around downstairs. Okay, so the van was gone? Yeah. Okay, and you said it was a dark color van? Yeah. So do you think they were dropped off and then the van pulled away? Uh, and this happened. Okay, hold on one moment. Can I get the air? Uh, you know, it's on Hammond. The caller believes that these two suspects were dropped off by a dark colored van. It pulled away and then she heard the subjects inside the house. Did the van have windows? Yeah. A lot. Okay. She also states that it has lots of windows. They knocked on her door first. Well, you're doing a really good job. These officers got a really good description of them. All right. My cat's with me right now. She's under the bed with me. Okay. Okay. I just want you to be safe right now, okay? So I'll let you know when the deputies are coming back to the house. But you're not hearing any more noises downstairs? No. Did you hear any doors slamming any time that you were talking to me? Okay. Anyone's in the house anymore, but I don't know. I want okay, to get out listen, I've got a command officer that's there. I'll tell you in just a moment. I, I do have an officer that's out there at the house. 
And you may hear him come in and walk around, okay? Okay. Can I get out of the bed from the hero? Once, once I, once you hear from them, you can get out, yes. But he is definitely at the house. Okay. Okay, he's gonna walk up to the door now, okay? Okay. The front door? The front door's locked. Okay. He'll figure that out. I want you to, my partner just told him when he's inside to call your name. Okay. Where are you at, Chloe? Can he see you? I just saw him. He's okay. walking to the next, he's walking next door. Okay. He's running. Chloe, do you have a bathroom downstairs there? Yeah. Okay, I want you to go in that bathroom and lock the door until I tell you, okay? Was your um garage door open? Oh, there's, there's a side door. Okay. On my garage. I see the cop. Okay. He's walking in front of my house. Okay. Okay. Do you want me to go get the door? Okay. She's coming to the door. All right, I'll let you go, Chloe. You did very, very good. Very brave. Okay, um, bye-bye. Bye. That Thursday afternoon, it was completely by chance that 13-year-old Chloe Symington was home alone. She had been feeling sick at school and being driven home by her grandmother. Chloe was watching TV in her bedroom when she heard knocking on the front door. I went to my door again and looked down to see a guy looking through the table drawer next to my front door. And that's when I got freaked out. She could see the man from upstairs and called her father's phone to know if he expected someone. But Noel, an engineer at the Norma Group in Auburn Hills, didn't answer because he was in the middle of a presentation. Calls to her mother, Lori, also weren't answered. I was really freaked out, scared. I didn't have time to get underneath my bed because in two to three minutes after that, the guy came upstairs. I was just curled up in a ball right there. Meanwhile, the family's pet Labrador, Roxy, seemingly stayed friendly towards the intruders and didn't bark. During the time, the men stole Christmas gifts, electronics, and a rifle. Chloe remained calm and followed her dad's advice to stay quiet. Well, my dad's always said, like, think now, react, or panic later. So I was just thinking, all right, I need to think of what ifs, like, because that's like, if they come up here, and if they see me, what am I gonna do? When the Macomb County Sheriff's Office responded to the call, they saw the two men walking away from the home. One of the suspects was tracked and apprehended by a canine unit, while the other surrendered himself. They were later identified as Daniel Paul Laughlin and Michael Thomas Donkevich, both 19 years old. Some of the stolen items were recovered. Laughlin pleaded guilty to charges including home invasion, conspiracy to commit home invasion, felony firearm, and resisting arrest. Considering his prior convictions and participation in adult drug court, he was sentenced to 13 to 30 years in prison. Meanwhile, Zdankevich received a special sentence for youth under the Holmes Youthful Trainee Act. This would lead to the conviction being erased from his record if he complied with the judge's conditions for up to three years. At the time of sentencing, he had no priors and was among the top of his graduating class at Clintondale High School. Chloe's dad, Noel Symington, said he couldn't be prouder of his daughter, a straight-A student at Lance Cruz Middle School Central. And Macomb County Sheriff Anthony Wickersham praised Chloe for not confronting the suspects. Kinsley Kinner, an innocent two-year-old, lived a life far from the safe and loving environment every child deserves. The events unfolding on December 3rd, 2015, would shock the community and leave an indelible scar on all who came to know about this case. At the time, her mother, Rebecca Kinner, was in a relationship with a man named Bradley Young. But this was not a story of a happy family, far from it. In the early hours, Kinsley's mother called 911 after she found the child unconscious. My, my daughter's um, coming and now she's not breathing. What in. address are you at? What's the address? Okay, you're Madison Township? Yes. What's your name? Rebecca Kenner. Okay, let's, let's try to keep it together. Do you, need to, do you need to get next to her for me or are you next to her right now? I'm next to her right now. Okay. Tell me exactly what happened. Did you find her like this or... Um, 
Oh. Yes, she went to bed, and she woke up screaming on the top of her lungs you know, twice, and now we can't get her to wake up. Okay, how old is she? She's two. She's two? Yes. Okay. Okay, so is she conscious right now, or is she, she actually? No, she's actually unconscious right now. Okay. Is she breathing? On and off. Okay. Okay. okay, listen to me. So she's not breathing normally, correct? No, she's not. Okay, tell him Tell him the life squad's on the way, but I want to help you guys do CPR. Do you know how to do CPR? Yes, we know how to do CPR. Okay, listen, where do you have her at? Is she laying on the ground? Right now we have her on the kitchen table. Okay, I want you to stand the Go next to her for me, okay? Okay. I want her laying on her back flat. Can you, does she have like a sleeper on or something? A nightgown? She has on flat pants and a long sleeve shirt. Okay. Hey, listen, you need to keep it together so we can take care of your baby, okay? Yeah. Okay, listen to me. I want you to check her mouth and see if there's any food or vomit in there, okay? There's you, not. Okay, you already checked? Yeah. Okay. Place your hand on her forehead and your other hand under her neck and, and tear it. Lift her chin up, okay? Tilt her chin. Have he, you guys already done? He's doing that now. Her her heart's beating, but it's beating really fast. And she just stop breathing in her eyes and their okay. eyes. And the- okay, listen. We need to keep the CPR. If she's not breathing, we have to do CPR for her, okay? Okay. Okay, I want, I want somebody to put their ear next to her mouth, and I want to see if there's any breathing, if you can feel or hear any breathing. She's not right now. He's trying. Okay. Tell him I, I want him to listen to what I'm saying, okay? I want everything I, everything I say, I want you to tell him, okay? Tell him to put his mouth next to her ear and see if they, he can feel or hear her breathing. No, no. She's taking breaths like every, like, 10, 15 seconds, she's taking big, deep breath. Okay. So she's breathing just a little, correct? Yeah, ba- barely. I mean, she's not kind of purple or nothing yet, but she, I mean, I can close her eyes and show her right back up. But she's, okay. she's, she's completely unresponsive. Okay, because because of her ineffective breathing, we need to give her some mouth to mouth. Okay. 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 Listen to exactly what I'm telling you to do because I know you're nervous. We're gonna walk through this together. Okay. Put her head back, pinch her nose, okay. cover her mouth with your mouth, and give her two breaths, one second each, to make sure that her chest rises with every breath. Okay. I did. Okay. Do you feel the air go in and out? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I guess. I don't know. I, I'm just trying to what you're telling me to do. I'm freaking out. Okay. You just stay with me. Okay. Listen. You need to do chest compressions. Can you put her on the ground? Yes, ma'am. Okay, put her on the ground. Okay, she's on the ground. Okay, place the heel of your hand between her chest bone, right between her nipples. All right. Okay, we're going to push down just two inches because of her age, and I want you to do this 30 times and fast, okay? Okay. Okay, and you you understand me so far? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay, keep going, okay? And I want you to count out loud, okay? 9, Okay, with your hand, with your other hand, pinch your nose, tilt her head back, and give her two more breaths. Make sure her chest rises and falls, okay? Okay. Okay, let's go back to chest compressions. Count to 30 again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 4, 5, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Okay, two more breaths. Pull her head back. Pinch your nose. We're going to keep doing this. You're doing great. Keep going, okay? Give her 30 chest compressions. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Tilt her head back, pinch her nose. Is the air going in? Yeah, she's, 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 she's releasing the back out. I heard her. Okay, uh, yep, okay. Back to chest compressions. Keep going. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Okay, two breaths. Okay. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Okay, two more breaths. 
Hey, don't give up. We're going to keep doing this until the paramedics get there. It should be shortly. Eight, eight, five, I'm holding out. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine, thirty. Come on, sis. One, Do you see two, anybody out there? Six, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, four, five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine, thirty. You're in Madison Township, right? They're here right now, ma'am. They're there. Let them take over, but don't stop until they take over. I want you to keep going until they actually take over chest compressions, okay? The officer's here. Okay. Let him take over, okay? It was too late. Within less than 48 hours, Kinsley died at Cincinnati Children's Hospital Medical Center. Her family chose for her to become an organ donor. As the investigation unfolded, a dark, twisted tale of abuse appeared. That horrific night, the little girl had a nightmare and woke up screaming and crying. Her mother's boyfriend, Bradley, took Kinsley into the living room to watch cartoons. Once the two-year-old dozed off, Rebecca went back to bed. The next thing she knew, Bradley was holding an unresponsive toddler. They were both arrested with charges pending the outcome of Kinsley's health. During her short hospital stay, investigators were called in after doctors determined that Kinsley's injuries were consistent with child abuse. Rebecca said Bradley was often physically abusive towards her, even during her pregnancy with the little girl's brother. And Rebecca said Young was initially just controlling of her, but slowly started taking control of Kinsley too. Gradually, she wasn't allowed to pick out her daughter's outfits or discipline her. Bradley had told her he always wanted a little girl and he loved her like his own and he wanted to help me. Over time though, Rebecca started noticing how her boyfriend was physically disciplining Kinsley. When she confronted Bradley about it, he turned on her, picking her up by the throat and throwing Rebecca on the bed. Eventually, she would be too frozen with fear to take any action. According to the mother, around Kinsley's second birthday, the man started holding the little girl above his head when she'd cry or wake up in the middle of the night, often shaking her. Despite numerous indications that Bradley's abuse was growing increasingly worse over time, Rebecca said she felt too trapped to call the police because he told her, There's nowhere you can go or nowhere you can hide where I can't find you. I was trained to kill in the military, and I can make it look like an accident. Before her December arrest, Rebecca had not gotten in trouble with the law. She pleaded guilty in March 2016 to involuntary manslaughter, permitting child abuse, and endangering children. Kinsley's father, Scott Sempt, addressed the court before the sentencing. Me and Becca were together on and off for a while. Becca was a good mom. She tried. She did her best to try. Up until she met Brad, something changed. Do not let up on this sentence just because she put herself in that situation. I mean, that's my one thing. I mean, you can't, you can't stress it enough. That was my baby girl that got taken. Just because you put yourself in a situation don't mean you should get away with it. The little girl's grandmother brought the courtroom to tears with her victim impact statement. The last thing that I was given of Kinsley to remember my baby by was her hair. And I took her hair, pieces of it, and I braided it because that's all that I have left of my baby. Becca wasn't a responsible mother. She did not watch and care for my granddaughter like she should have. She should have been there to watch that baby. Meanwhile, Rebecca said she took responsibility for not getting them out of the situation they were in. But I did love my daughter. Every time I close my eyes, I see her smile. I see her face. And the night before she passed, the last thing she said to me was, I love you more, Mommy. And that's all I hear constantly. And if I could take my daughter's place, I would take it in a heartbeat. Ultimately, Rebecca Kenner was sentenced to 11 years in prison for her part in her daughter's death. While incarcerated in the Butler County Jail, she gave birth to a baby boy named Wyatt. 
That's also the name of a young boy who received Kinsley's lung shortly after she died. And Wyatt wasn't the only one whose life was changed by the two-year-old. Little Xander the Brave was given a second chance at life after receiving Kinsley's liver. Happy birthday, dear Xander. Happy birthday to you. On top of that, the vigil for Kinsley yielded hundreds of toy donations for children in need. When it came to Bradley Young's trial, although Rebecca Kinner testified, it was removed from the record after a judge declared her incompetent, possibly due to intoxication from medications. Bradley Young was found guilty of murder, endangering children, and involuntary manslaughter. He was sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole after 15 years with credit for 308 days already served. Baby Wyatt is now with his father, Jason White. Kinsley's dad thought he was the little boy's father, but DNA testing revealed he was not. Rebecca's attorney, Kyle Rapier, has said that White is a family friend of the Kinners, and he has two children. Rapier said Rebecca was ending her relationship with Semt when she became pregnant. She started dating Bradley Young in August of that year. Although neighbor disputes are fairly common, they do not often escalate to this point. Cyber County 911, where is your emergency? You might see an ambulance. Oh, an ambulance. Okay, I'll see you right now. He's laying in his yard over here. How old is he? That we've had trouble before. Okay, and um, is he? And where are you right now? I'm in the house. My house. Where's the gun? Huh? Where is your gun? Laying outside. <laughs> on the porch. Hey, so we don't know if he's breathing or anything. Nope, don't know. Okay, uh, are are you gonna stay in your house? Yeah, I'll be out here on the porch. Okay, is anybody out with him? Nope. Do you know the male's name? His first name's Dana. I don't know his last name. Okay. He made threats here a couple of weeks ago, and I had to call a while on him. He came over here doing it again, right? Just a few minutes ago. What happened? He says my dogs was barking. And they did yap a little bit as the dog walked up the street, but he's drunk or something. And his face was blood red, and he's just cussing, calling me names, and threatening me and every damn time. Okay. Calling me names. Okay, and what is your what is your name, sir? Okay, and you and you're on the porch, and your gun is on the porch with you. Yeah. Okay, I want you to leave the gun alone. Is it? Did you unload it? I think I did. Okay. All right. Where is where are you putting the gun? I'll put it back in the house. Okay. Probably outside. Okay. All right. Yeah. So I'm gonna call my wife and tell her what's happening. She's okay. okay. Um, I need to know, like, where you're gonna put the put the gun in the home. I put, I put the gun in the living room on top of the cabinet. Okay. And you're calling. Okay. Do you know his house where he is? Yeah, it's next door here. Just next door. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna probably have to keep you on the line though until we can get well, lost. I gotta, I gotta hang out and call my wife. I'll be right here on the porch. Okay. okay. 66-year-old Paul Miller and his wife had been having ongoing issues with their neighbor, 52-year-old Dana Mohall, over their dog's barking. According to the Millers, he threatened the couple and their pet. That day, the neighbors argued and Mohall returned to his house. Meanwhile, Paul Miller had retrieved a 9mm gun, sat on his porch, and waited for the man to reappear. He did not call the police. Minutes later, the argument resumed. Miller walked down from the porch to confront Mulhall at the fence, which Mulhall, who had been drinking, shook but never crossed. Miller had the gun in his hand, clearly visible to Mulhall, who did not initially recoil since he was on his own property. According to the shooter, the 52-year-old had put his right hand towards his bag as if to retrieve a gun which is when Miller started firing methodically five times. Two of the shots were as Mulhall was crawling away. The victim was found with multiple gunshot wounds and pronounced dead at the scene. Miller was subsequently arrested and charged with first-degree murder. During the trial, 
The 66-year-old did not deny the shooting, but claimed he had done so in self-defense. However, the prosecution argued that Miller had shot the man five times, including once in the back as Mulhall tried to flee, contradicting the claim of self-defense. Additionally, witnesses described five shots that were fired slow in a methodical manner and evenly spaced. Mulhall was left-handed, contradicting Miller's statement of him retrieving a gun from the right side. He was also unarmed. Ultimately, the jury rejected the self-defense claim and convicted Paul Miller of first-degree murder. He was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Six years later, the killer attempted to challenge his conviction, claiming he was ineffectively represented at trial six years ago. Paul Miller lost the appeal on April 6, 2018. For more True 911 calls, watch this episode next.